Last month, I tried planning again on the iPad, and my conclusion was that I loved the PDF editing app that I used. It allowed me to seamlessly use AI in my planning, but the iPad just wasn't the tool for me to use as a paper replacement. This time, Wondershare have sponsored me to try out PDF Element on the two latest and most powerful e-ink tablets. So this is the Note F3C and the Tab Ultra C Pro. So which of these amazing e-ink tablets will be the ideal balance of the digital analog with AI assisting my experienced professional brain? Let's find out. Can either of these amazing e-ink tablets mean that I can go paperless at work? PDFs on this amazing A5 color e-ink screen. PDFs are your new notebooks. My mum was a school leader and she used to stick in sheets into these amazingly detailed, well-organized notebooks. She had whole shelves full and they're all organized by date. And she could pull out any key document from the school over the whole period that she worked there. I think that I can recreate that now that I've got a powerful enough app that can let you fully edit PDFs. PDF Element lets you do just that with your PDFs. You can produce a cloud-based PDF library of all your important professional documentation. I can see one immediate difference between using PDF Element on the Note F3C and the Tab Ultra C Pro. The Note F3C doesn't have the smart scanner on the back and you can use that to scan and recognize any printed PDF. I'll demonstrate that later in the video. And if this is good, if it works a workflow on ink, I might just be buying a perpetual full license. It's not going to be quite as good in PDF element for using the pen input. That's not the fault of the app. It's because e-ink works differently to LCD screens and apps have to be carefully optimized for e-ink pen input if it's going to work with that super low latency that the Books Note Taking app does. However, with this latest line of Books Super Refresh Technology enabled tablets having ultra fast refresh mode and much faster processors, it should be less noticeable in fact. Let's see which of these two devices have the best screen response in the ultra fast mode. Okay, you could live with using the pen input on these devices, but unfortunately all non-books apps are designed to work on LCD screens and they're not gonna work well with the e-ink screen. So I'm thinking to myself that I'll be able to use handwritten notes here on my phone, my Galaxy Z Fold, and of course they'll save to the cloud. And then I can use all the AI features here on the e-ink tablets whenever I need to use those. So the thing is I can add those handwritten notes in my phone and then I'll be able to see them synced up on my e-ink tablet in the cloud version of the document. So between this device my OLED phone and one of these e-ink tablets, I'll be able to do all of these things. At school, I'll be able to copy questions straight out of a PDF and paste them into a PowerPoint. I'll be able to use the AI summary mode to shorten explanations. Give me a short explanation of gravitational potential. And then I can just copy that with one click and use it in my resources. I can also use it to plan me a couple of starter questions on the topic of gravitational potential energy. provide a set of answers for these questions. That's just neat, right? In the same way, I can plan discussion questions or comprehension questions, and I can summarize the reading. Plan me some discussion questions to ask the students after they've read this document. I can also, of course, here on the Tab Ultra C Pro, I can use the Smart Scanner, along with PDF Element, to digitize documents and upload them to the students' cloud locations like Teams. Of course, I could also use these for signing forms. Not a real form, but everything's editable within PDF Element. That's really useful for my channel for managing those documents. It's also really useful for suggesting titles and descriptions for managing the metadata of my YouTube channel. I mean, that was easy. And also for me, it's really useful for it to be able to read and summarize a manual so that I can prepare content on how to use devices. I mean, that's brilliant. You can quickly just scan about ask it questions of the PDF rather than find the detail in the PDF. You see, one of the limitations of the books PDF reader is the cloud synchronization. So I'm not really changing the PDF here. 
On top of the PDF, there's a separate file which contains the reading data. So this annotation is not really changing the PDF itself. Whereas with PDF element, changes that I make on one device are saved to the actual PDF. So it's saved within the PDF document itself. So I can sync the reading data, but that can only be interpreted by NeoReader on another books tablet. You can automatically set it to save a flat PDF each time you save. And then you have a copy, which you can then sync up to the cloud. But you should treat that as a read-only copy, as any changes you make on that versions will not be synced to the live books version. But here in the PDF element app, I'm actually adding any comments, any notes, Notes to the PDF file itself. So any change I make are represented on any device accessing the PDF element document cloud. They're repeated everywhere, so that's really neat. And the cloud is one of my favorite features here. I just need to be disciplined and keep track of my PDFs in folders. Of course, I can always fall back on the search function or sort them by date. In the free version, you get one gigabyte of cloud space and you can share PDFs with others and 2000 AI use tokens. And you can still enjoy working across platforms on web, mobile and desktop. What's more, the full Android Pro version is very good value. For just £3.79 per month or £23.99 per year, you can remove ads, use the liquid mode, merge PDFs, set passwords, and use all of the powerful text editing features and much more. Well, you can use the editing features for free, but you need the pro account to save the PDF without a watermark. But the best value option is £34.49 for the perpetual license. Let's have a little look around the Android app. So I can access any document that I have been reading and working on from the document cloud. And these are available in every instance that I'm signed into, whether that be desktop, or iPad or Android. And just as in the desktop and iPad app, there is the AI assistant to help you read, edit, and use the details in your PDFs. And I can see this tool being one of the most useful things in a professional workflow. I love having the AI assistant right there within the PDF so you can ask it questions. If, for instance, you didn't know what a certain keyword was, you could have an in-depth conversation with the AI to help you understand that. Nice. To take this interesting PDF from the US government about AI in education, I just need to click AI Summarize PDF and it gives me the main points. I can then dive in further and I can ask it questions and get clarification. And generally now, I've got a better idea of what to expect in this PDF and where to find it. It's an immersive way to read and in Wondershare PDF Element, you can ask questions of the PDF and it will give you the answer with the content of that PDF document. And in AI mode, you can ask it to give you examples to put things into context. Give me an example, a good example of using AI in education. That can help you analyze the content of the PDF and it can also help you generate content, generate text to be used elsewhere. I can just click this plus here and it's copied to the clipboard and ready to go into another app. Download and try the new Android version, iOS version and desktop version from the links below. Your subscription gives you access to frequent updates to the excellent Wondershare apps. For example, the new desktop version brought new immersive reading options to bring AI more seamlessly into your workflow, as well as an adaptable navigation bar, automated bookmark generation, effortless batch production, for instance, for compressing whole groups of documents, and the new global translation mode to translate whole PDFs. Between these two tablets, I think you are more likely to enjoy using the Tab Ultra C Pro with productivity apps such as PDF Element. But don't discard the Note F3C for that use case either, because using the portrait stand along with a Bluetooth keyboard makes for a really nice productivity station. And many apps do prefer you to use portrait orientation, although I find PDF Element is happy in either orientation. Explain this piece of text. It might seem like a really simple feature, but many of you are gonna love just being able to organize the pages of a PDF. One thing I do quite a lot is just to add a blank page into my planner, and then I've got a whole page where I can add a set of notes. Especially if you're reading something in a PDF, you could also, of course, add a blank page straight after something that you've read, and that could let you add some notes directly after that reading. This lets you make the PDF your own. Students, you might like to have a blank page to answer the questions straight after a question page in a textbook, or insert a page for your lecture notes right at the relevant point in your academic text. So one word in evaluation of these devices is whilst they both handle productivity apps like this really well, using these apps really empties the battery quickly. I'm talking whole percentages in minutes. This is the biggest challenge for books now. Give us amazing battery performance on Colour Ink with the benefits of the book super refresh technology. And there's just no contest in this space anymore. Next video in this little series, I'm gonna take a look at PDF Element versus Adobe Acrobat Reader. I am a long time subscriber to Adobe Creative Cloud and within that you do get Acrobat. But one reason I can tell you to check out PDF Element is that it's half the price of the Adobe software. Check it out in the links in the description now.